Good morning, everybody. This is Dee, and we are starting our session, our technical assistance session for Summer Youth Employment Program. And welcome, everybody, on the call. It's good to see everybody this morning. And we have Fred and Tammy available from DHS and DCEO, respectively, to answer questions that uh, we have that might come up. Uh, we are also have some topics that we plan to cover on purpose, uh, but let's take a look at the questions that we might have from uh, the audience. Uh, we do have somebody that has a question or needs a demonstration about the pre and post assessment. So whoever that was that checked that box, if you would like to type your question in, we will um, answer that for you. Uh, Tammy, let's start with you. Is there something that you would like to share with the audience today? Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm glad we, to see we have a um, participation on the call today. Um, yeah, one of the key things that we're looking at now is outcomes, um, and we're getting requests from you know management and, and upper staff regarding um, the outcomes of the youth. So one of the things that will be discussed today is recording outcomes, whether the kids returned to school or were employed, and it's very important that you code these people appropriately. Uh, we don't want to you know, have a lot of people showing up as uh, not selected or, or not you know, chosen as an outcome. So when, when you can identify an outcome to them, we really need for you to do that. And then for DCEO grantees, we are realigning funds. We have uh, doing um, deobligations and some reallocations at this point. Some programs have ended, and, and we're reallocating money so that they can continue, continue through the end of September. Um, and we will be doing a call around um, probably even this week um, regarding agencies that still seem to have some funds available. If you're looking at 50 or 60 percent still available, like in the youth wage section, we're going to be calling around um, and looking to see if there's going to be some more um, deobligations that we need to do. But you know, otherwise, I think we're, we're looking in, in good shape. We're looking to wrap up the program, so we're on the back end of it now, and um, that's why it's important to make sure that we have all the information in WorkNet in and accurate. And that's pretty much all I have. Thank you very much. Um, so I do not see a question about pre and post assessment. Uh, so whoever, uh, there's two people now that wanted to see about that. OK, here we go. The youth are taking the test and taking screenshots of their results. When I look at their profile, it states that the pre and post test has not been taken. Darren, what group are you with, and is it DHS or DCEO? And are the youth in the correct site? And I'm going to pull up the screen so that you can see which one it is, because some of the youth may have been in the program last year. So we need to make sure that they are in this website, SYEP 2014, and accessing their account from this year. That's very, very, very important that that's where the youth are uh, so that they are doing their pre and post tests in the right, uh, in the right year worth of programming. OK, and Kristen said that that was happening to them, that they were putting it under the wrong profile without us knowing about it. So Darren, you need to make sure that you are using the correct profile that you have on for them, not starting a new profile. And if you do discover that there are two or more profiles for each youth, you do need to contact SYEP. I'm going to type this into the chat pod at Illinois. Got to type it the right way. Work net.com you need to get in touch with somebody to make sure that that is going to that uh, that right place if their profile is wrong then we need to check with that um, if there is something more wrong than that send an email to syep2014 at illinoisworknet.com and Lacey will probably be able to help you with that, OK? Uh, and she will take care of that for you. Um, all right, we also have Ashley on the call this morning, so that's 
Um, that's very nice. Well, Ashley, if you have called in, I will unmute your phone as well. Um, and I don't see that you've called in yet, so just let me know. Um, okay, uh, let's talk anything else about it. Was that it for the pre and post assessments? Is there anybody else that had a about that? All right. And uh, Scarlett, if you can start grabbing things from the chat pod and putting it in our notes, double check that, I would appreciate it. Um, all right, let's move on to the next topic, which is payroll and reporting. If whoever put the information in there about payroll and reporting could uh, type your question in, we will be happy to answer that for you. And welcome to the call, Ashley. If you would like to say something to the audience about anything uh, on behalf of DHS and the community uh, youth employment program, sure. We good welcome morning, you to everyone. The call. Um, it's, it's good to be on. Um, I just want to just you know say thank you, everyone, for your participation in this year's program. I know we're coming to an end for many of the program. I'm just so proud of all the organizations, all the hard. You know, it took a lot of um, and hard work to not only get the but know, learn a, about the new systems that we put in place this year, at least for the Department of Human Services side, um, for the Community Youth Employment Program. And we definitely appreciate the support. We appreciate your patience with us as we got things up and running. And um, I, you know, certainly appreciate the help of the Illinois WorkNet and also the partners over at the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity um, for your support, not only for your programs, but also mine as well. So thank you again, everyone. Um, I just wanted to take this opportunity to log on because I know I haven't been able to participate in as many of the webinars, um, but I knew you know, before the summer wraps up, I, I definitely wanted to be present. So um, if you have any questions for me directly, I'll try to stay on a little bit longer um, but as always, you um, can contact me via email, um, either at my personal email or at the dhs.cyep at illinois.gov website. Um, I'm sorry, email, or give me a call on my line. So um, thank you, and that wraps up what I wanted to say this morning. And Ashley, if you'd like to add your that email address that you would like everybody to contact you um, into the chat pod for everyone, that would be yeah, great. Yeah, I'll type that in right now. Great. And um, okay, so now let's move on with the uh, payroll and reporting of that. Um, Darren just says she, um, they just want more basic info to assure accuracy. So right now on the screen that I'm going to pull up again. We have the payroll screen that I accessed from the uh, SYEP tools. And to remember to edit payroll, uh, you, have, uh, you can submit something and edit it once it is not submitted. And then if I download a payroll template, It's going to open up in Microsoft Excel. And I can then uh, enter hours. And I'm just going to make this real simple. Uh, and I'm going to copy and drag this down um, across all of them, just assuming that everybody has five dollars and I'm sorry, five hours and nine dollars uh, per job. And then I'm going to save this as um, okay, I'm going to save this as that. And it's saving it as a CSV file. I go back 
to the um, payroll, I browse for that file, and it is uh, down near the bottom. There we go. And then I'm going to payroll template. It's telling me that I had 14 youth with $630 in wages. The payroll has no errors. There are all of the records here, so I can verify that the hours and the names and the time are all correct. And then um, I can look at an expenditure report. And I'm going to open up one of those here. Um, Grantee expenditure report, this one. And what I would want to do with this is, is sure that um, the expenditures that are, uh, somebody needs to stop checking boxes, please, so that everybody can see the screen share. Thank you. And um, so then what you would need to do is, for under youth wages, you would add the, first of all, you would make the date correct so that it was the 71 to 731. Um, you would have all of your numbers here, whether it's a partial or a final. Once it's a final, then you need to make sure that all of your numbers and your expenditures, um, I'm going to add the $630 um, here. OK, we've got, um, uh, I'm just going to add here $630. What the two numbers for the uh, budget minus previously minus current gives you the current balance, and these numbers will automatically work. Now remember, my $630 to put in there does not include workman's comp, uh, insurance, or the matching Social Security and Medicare funds that you need to match for the youth. So you do need to add that number to this total of the $630. I'm just doing this for simplification today. If you have any program service expenses or contractual expenses or, or any administrative costs, and uh, TEMI administrative costs on DCEO are 10% max? 10% maximum, correct. And on DHS, uh, is that the same 10% max? We don't have a set percentage for DHS. Everything outside, which is 70% of the contract, um, you know, so essentially it's 30% can be spread across program, administrative, or contractual costs. OK, great. All right, so once you have this form completed, you would want to file uh, Save As. And I'm doing. 731 here. And, and then I go back to um, there, I just changed my Microsoft password. Um, there was an attempt to hack my computer. I All right, so now it's uh, saving the document. And I can go back to the um, payroll reporting, upload the expenditure files. Oh, I've got to browse it first. Sorry. Uh, grantee.
expenditure report for 731. I upload the expenditure files. Once you have verified that you are, you can and submit. If you think that you made a mistake, you can delete it, redo the form, and upload a new file. And then you can submit. Once it is submitted, you'll get this confirmation here. You'll get the confirmation that you can submit the payroll that matches the uh, report dates. Hit submit. That will notify uh, DHS and DCEO that uh, they are they have a payroll to review. Payrolls. I review payrolls on Wednesday. Today would be um, when I will submit some cash requests. Great, and DHS reviews them on? We actually review them on a daily basis, um, but the monthly expenditure documentation forms were due on August, were due on Monday, September 15th. Um, so if those have not been submitted, they must be submitted immediately. Oh, yeah, because you guys want your money, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, <laughs> so this says that, that payroll has been for review when I I go back to the payroll list. When I look at it, uh, the edit option has been removed. Oh, I lost that particular file. The edit option has been removed, and then you can just view it. Now, if you do discover that you made a mistake and you need to have it put back into edit mode, all you have to do is send an email off to Tammy or to um, Fred or Ashley and that back in, into uh, edit mode for you so that you can take care of that. So does that answer your questions, Darren? Darren went to sleep. <laughs> All right. Let's, um, I'm going to assume that that answers his question. Do we have any other questions about payroll before we move on? Uh, I'm not seeing any other questions or comments about payroll. All right, so let's go back to the dashboard and let's take a look at outcomes. and. Um, what we're going to look at here is we have 21 completed applications for this particular uh, workforce area that is dealing with this. Springfield Urban League is their primary um, person that is dealing with the program. They have uh, filled in all of their numbers, and as we were, green is good, red is bad. And what we want here is that we have four people who have not completed their completion status. One thing that you have to remember is that to have a completed status, and this is required for all of your youth, that they have to have had at least one payroll entered and preferably a pre and post assessment done in addition to that one payroll, but at minimum we need one payroll, or they need to be withdrawn or exited. And we have a question from Alexandria. What happens when a client doesn't complete the post-assessment and has already went back to school? Can she still successfully complete the program? Are you DHS or DCEO, Alexandria? The student could actually access the program online, submit it, and then just send you an email with a copy of their certificate. So that's a possibility there.
let's take a look at the eligible youth here. And we'll search. And we see here that it says eligible enrolled, not placed. They were withdrawn. So um, Barricat Jack was eligible enrolled, but never placed. He was withdrawn. If they were eligible, but never enrolled, then you don't have to withdraw them. So I have, Beatrice says, I have a youth who does have a payroll update but did not complete the post-assessment, and I can only withdraw or exit her even if she went back to school. Is that normal? Um, Beatrice, that is, um, you're sure that the payroll got uploaded and she has been paid. All right, that is something that I need you to send an email to Lacey. So send that to the SYEP. I'm going to type this in here one more time, SYEP 2014 at Illinois WorkNet. Oops, got to spell it right. Dot com. Make sure that you uh, let her know which the per which student it is, uh, so that we can get that taken care of. Monica says, so I see the different options of completion once we move them to either back to school. Does that mean they are completed? That means in the Illinois WorkNet option of it, they are completed. But if they're still working at a um, a job or in classroom stuff, you do not have to mark them as completed yet. Uh, Ashley Smith is asking, what are the requirements of the worksite's employers with regard to wrapping up this program? Are they required to fill out any forms, i.e. evaluations? What about the youth? We're going to cover that in just a moment, Ashley, so if you can hang on to that one for me for just a moment. Uh, just a moment. Um, Kristen has to jump off, but I have a quick question. Is there a way to see who in our program posted success stories? Um, oh, uh, Scarlett, that's a question that I don't know the answer to. If you can grab that, we can send everybody an email uh, regarding that after the webinar is over. And then, um, and Caitlin's asking, OK, we're talking about success stories now. Um, What I want to know is everybody done with uh, the with the completion status on here, and then we'll move on to success stories. So if you can raise your hand and let me know, are we done with um, completion? Okay, it looks like quite a few people have raised their hand. And before we go to outcomes, Tammy, let me cover the success stories, okay? All right, so let's move on to success stories. And what, uh, what you can do as a youth or an employer or a work site, then you can go to SYEP 2014, and then you can click the SYEP 2014 success stories. We have a couple of opportunities here. Uh, one of them is for the youth to go in and complete their survey, which is the first box right here. The youth has maybe eight screens with a couple of questions per screen that they can finish. It only takes them about five minutes, maybe. Then the other option is to log into their Illinois WorkNet SYEP account tools and submit a success 
story on their tab. So let me go there. And I'm going to log in. Oops. Can't even spell my own name right. And I'm logging in. And I would go to my success story tab. Let me make this a little bit bigger here. I would go to my success story tab and be an enrolled youth to fill out a success story. But as an adult or as a workforce partner, I can use that tool. I can complete the end of the program also as a, for the employer survey. This is the survey that only has six questions. This is it, employers. So if they can take the time to complete this survey, it will help. And then as we go, we share their success story. So I click on the box. Takes, I'm sorry, we'll click on the link. It takes us to the um, WIA Works for Illinois WorkNet. And um, Melody asks, is it mandatory that each youth submit a success story? What if they refuse or have already returned to school? The, we would like them to complete both the survey and the success story. It's not mandatory, but for us to continue receiving funding, it is beneficial that everyone try to complete a success story. So let me go back and show you how I got here. I was on the SYEP 2014 site. I went to SYEP 2014 success stories. The page came up. The youth participants option is first. And then the employers and partners are second. Now, as an employer, you can enter a success story for your for your employer customer, or the employer can complete it for themselves. So this uh, is the same link. It will take you to the basically the same place, and it will help you, uh, complete the success story here. And under uh, the success story, we want to find story type. And we want special projects. We want to uh, pick what district they're in if that's at all possible. But we want, I'm sorry, we want to click here to submit your success story. I advise. Then directions here to, to prepare an effective story. Or you can submit your story for WIA training. So you want to click the yellow box that says Submit Your Success Story. You have to be logged in. So I can click here to log in. It will take me back to the page I uh, submit my success story by putting in my name, my information, all of this good stuff. What was the WIA service type that you received? And they employ a youth for the summer. And 
and it was great. Whatever the story is, uh, you want the story to be compelling. You want it to talk about the person. You want it to um, talk about the success, how the youth learned some items, gained some skills, uh, learned some uh, workplace habits, and making sure that the information shared is a positive light on the program. And then you can also add a photo, uh, choose a file, add a brief description. I'm not going to take that step right now. You have read and agreed to the disclaimer, and you can submit the work sites. Uh, Beatrice asks, do the work sites have to have an Illinois WorkNet account? Uh, they should have had one as part of the agree agreement so that they could log in and do different things. But if they don't, that is where you, as the uh, grantee, can submit the success story for your customer. All right, so let me go back a couple of uh, steps here so that I don't miss any of the points. Uh, Caitlin asks, I also have a question about success stories. I have a question about the success stories. When I have submitted mine for the youth, it says I will receive an email to verify that I receive one that says a success story has been submitted for approval. Please log in and review for approval. Um, we approve and review, Illinois WorkNet approves and reviews all success stories. So we will do that uh, for you in most cases. Uh, we answered Melody's question about returning to school. Are the surveys optional? Yes, the surveys are optional. I showed you how to get to the success story page. Some of, uh, Teresa says some of the youth don't have access to computers, so they come into our office to use the computer. The success story requests that a photo be uploaded. Unfortunately, our computers don't have photos on them. Is there an alternative so that the success stories can be submitted? You do not have to submit the, success, uh, the photo with the success story. You can send that to the SYEP 2014. Um, Scarlett, can you type that in for me? Um, the SYEP 2014 at IllinoisWorkNet.com, that will go in there. Um, and then Ashley is saying, uh, just for clarity, as an employer, do I complete the employer success story and have the work site complete the partner success story? The, um, Ashley, if you were the grantee, the recipient of the funds, and an employer, you can do both. If you are talking about the work site employer, that's what the employer success story is, or you can submit that for your employer customer. So that's the difference between this one here. This is for you. This is for the work site, this is for you as the grantee to submit the success story for your employer. So Ashley, does that clarify the answer for you? OK, great. Um, now I've lost my place. Uh, work sites have to have an Illinois WorkNet account. No, you can do that. We talked about the pictures. We talked about. That one, uh, the success stories can be viewed once they are up. We are going through the process of compiling them right now. I'm trying to get back here to the page. We'll add them all uh, as needed into the success in action item here. We do have several of them up. Um, we will embellish that slide share presentation 
and we will add them to our uh, success story list and also probably a link in news and updates so that they can be viewed uh, as well. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. We'll also send out a notification to everybody about where they can view them as well, Caitlin. John asks, where do employers access the surveys? Again, if they go to the page SYEP 2014, uh, if they just go to the SYEP 2014 website, they will see the SYEP 2014 success stories in the toolbar. Then all they have to do is scroll down to where the employers section is here. I guess I could highlight the whole word. And then click on the link number one here that says complete the end of program employer survey. Does that answer your question, John? OK, great. Do we have any other questions about surveys or success stories? Monica is typing, so we'll give her just a second. And Monica, do you have a workforce partner account? Yes, you have to log in with your Illinois workforce partner account login and password. Do you? Coretta is typing also. Monica, are you multitasking? <laughs> All right. Um, Tammy? Yes. Put you up on deck here. And I will answer any of these other questions. All right. Monica, I'll go back over this as soon as Tammy's done. One more time, OK? Um, Tammy, let's talk about outcomes. What, what is it that you want the group to do? OK, well, first I want to clarify the difference between um, a completion and, and, I guess, an outcome. Um, we have, for DCEL grantees only, we have the, our performance measures. And what we look at is your planned number of youth to be served compared to actual number of youth basically placed in a, a work experience. That's our one measure. So it's your planned number and your scope of work based upon those that were actually placed. Um, youth work readiness um, completion. So that is the youth that took the pretest and those that take the post-test and those that have improvement. And our measure basically is those that score 70% or higher on the post-test. And then our third uh, measure is successful completion of the summer youth program, which is successful completion is you have a pretest, you have one um, um, payroll, at least one payroll upload, and you have the post-test. And so if you have all three of those components, it's considered to be a successful completion for the DCO grant. And our completion rate is 70%. So of those that um, have been enrolled, um, in the program, at least 70% complete those three, three measures. So those are DCO's performance measures. Um, as far as outcomes are concerned, that's where we're talking about once they're done with your program, what happened to those youth? So did they go back to school? Did they become employed? Um, did they you know, enter service? So what, 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 where did those kids go once you, they completed your program? Um, and so that's what we want to be very clear on is that um, when these students are exiting, to make sure that you're following up with them and seeing where they're going um, after that point, um, because that's something that we're going to be looking at this year. Um, um, and it's not necessarily it's not a performance measure on your part, but it's something that we're we're gauging to see. Okay, after this program, where where are these kids at? And Tammy, do we have a, an outcome report that has been created that the Everybody no, the DCEO grantees have to do a quarterly report. and It's part of their grant agreement, and they've already submitted one. The next one is going to be due um, in October, um, which would be basically reporting on the performance measures, grouping their expenditures, and then um, um, 
And that's those three performance measures that I was talking about. Which um, So that will be in our DCEO grantee report. And then they, they also have to submit a trial balance with that. Um, and with a trial balance, it has to be funded. So we have to be able to see what your revenue was from this program and what your expenditures were for this program. Um, so that's what we're going to need. And like I said, that will be in October, and I'll work directly with my grantees on that, on that report. All right. And Beatrice is asking, is that the same for DHS? Ashley, would you like to answer that for Beatrice? Ashley may have dropped out. Fred, can you uh, type an answer in there for Beatrice? And remember, you can submit success stories. You can continue to submit success stories. So as they come in, maybe you just don't have time to follow up with your employers right now, or maybe your youth might come home on break or be out for school for a couple of days and you see them sometime during the fall, they can always go log back in and, and then uh, go to complete a survey or a success story. Um, all right. Um, Coretta asks, what if the employer has completed the paper worksite assessment form included in the forms for the grant, can we enter the responses recorded? Um, Coretta, are you saying that as, as a survey response, or are you saying that as a success story? OK, I believe what happens is, because this is a survey monkey survey, once you hit done, it will not let you enter it uh, into the survey again. It assumes that you're done. So if the person could then just do it, the survey on their own. Because as you can see, the survey employer is only six questions. Uh, if you only had one employer and you want to log in and do that as them, then you could do that. But if you had more than one worksite employer, then you might need to ask them to fill it out for themselves. Does that answer your question, Coretta? OK. And go ahead. Who's on the phone? Uh, Beatrice, we'll get an answer for you uh, for the for the DHS if it's the same for the DHS for the outcomes. Uh, we'll have we'll have DHS send all of their grantees a response about that. So, Scarlett, if you could note that. Um, and Winifred will will get DHS to send everybody a uh, an answer. Okay, I know I promised somebody that I would. Oh, Monica, I promised her that I would show you where to go for the success. And what happens? I need to um, need to make this just a hair. On this page, uh, it will take you to a, a, a diff, if you're entering it employer, then if you're entering it as the, uh, as the partner submitting the success story. So what you need to look for when you click here to enter, you need to look for this yellow, the yellow box here to click here to submit your success story. And then uh, you really want to make sure that you're getting in here uh, story type special projects. And you want to, uh, they're going to need to know their uh, district. 
I'm sorry, this is searching for them. This, I apologize. This is not uh, submitting. So this is where you will see the stories by area. So as they are submitting their story, click here to submit, then they submit their story here. And again, it's the name. So you need to look, help them, if they have a problem with it, help them look for the submit, so to keep submitting. So it's click here to submit your success story. Look for the yellow block. And then under step three, it's submit. And that's when all of these boxes will show up. And again, if you want to include a picture for the submission, uh, but as somebody uh, said earlier, their computers don't allow pictures, you can email that picture to syep2014 at illinoisworknet.com. OK. So Monica, does that, is that help you out a little bit better? All right, great, 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 great. OK, um, I don't see any other questions being typed in right now. We're at about 50 minutes for our presentation today. Uh, if anybody else has any last minute questions, start typing quick, 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 speed typing. And uh, Ashley, if you happen to be on the call, would you like to share anything else? Or Fred, I can open up your phone line. Uh, please take a moment to check in to see uh, if you did not already have a chance to check in. All right, I'm going to type this in here, SYEP 2014 at IllinoisWorkNet.com. Um, and that's also for any questions that you might have. And again, we will make sure that we have uh, outcome information requirements sent out to all the DHS grantees. All right, so if we don't have any other questions coming in, you all have a great day. Please make sure that you have checked in. We had a great audience today. I appreciate everybody coming and participating. And have a great rest of your week as well. We'll be back one more time next week on the 24th at 10.30 AM. Have a great day.